my string has broken.
And good morning. good morning. And welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. Um, today's a bit different because it is the fifth Sunday of the month. Therefore, we will be doing morning prayer um, followed with communion. Um, so everything is basically in the bulletin except for the music. So um, let us begin. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <laughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall be and Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. responsibly a portion of Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, 
and promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Cana, to be your allotted inheritance. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. reading from the book of Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you, than, to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you? <clears throat> with, with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country. Give the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs, too, deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God, is with us, if God is for us, who is against us? Who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us? Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to the slaughtered. No, in all these things we are, not, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which somehow, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding on one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old, the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Did someone ask Jesus, what is the kingdom of heaven like? Someone must have asked him because Jesus responds with a lot of different answers to that question in today's gospel reading. He says that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, or it's like yeast or it's like a treasure hidden in a field, or it's like a pearl of great value, or it's like a net thrown into the sea, bringing into its net everyone without discrimination. We might say that the treasure hidden in a field and the pearl of great value are, you know, similar, because they're both, in a sense, treasures, but how do the other three fit in there? So we might ask, well, Lord, which is it? Which is it? But we need to remember that all of these descriptions are just metaphors. They're just metaphors. The kingdom of heaven, of course, is not a mustard seed. It's like a mustard seed. And so it is with the yeast, the treasure, the pearl, and the fisherman's net. It is not any of these things, but it's like all of these things. Why? Well, did you ever think that it may be because our language is just too inadequate to describe describe the kingdom of heaven in all of its magnificent glory? And just as it is inadequate to truly describe the very just as it is inadequate to describe all the truly unique and various concepts of God. We think of God as a loving father, a shepherd, as the creator, the ground of our being, persistent in love, or as a hen gathering her brood under her wings. And all of those things are true but they still fail to truly describe the magnificence of God. That's because God is infinite. 
and we are not. So what is the kingdom of heaven really like? Apparently, it is a state of being rather than a kind of place. And actually, St. Paul is giving us a good picture in today's epistle. It's the kingdom of heaven where, when we don't know how to pray, but the Spirit does our praying for us. It's the kingdom of heaven when all things somehow work together for good for those who love God. Eugene Peterson's interpretation of this in his paraphrase, The Message, is an interesting one. He writes, quote, Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside us, helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant condition, and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good." End quote. This very assurance about prayer reminded me of something that happened about 33 years ago. I had gone to visit one of my cousins and she had colon cancer and it was getting closer and closer to the end. As I sat there with her, she said to me, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say in my prayers. And I still remember what I said to her. I responded that she had just prayed. That she had just prayed. When you tell God that you don't know how to pray or what to pray for, then you're actually in the process of praying. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. But that's not the only way that, Paul, that what Paul says describes the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God when we know that there is absolutely nothing in this world or out of it that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now that's a treasure that's worth selling all that we have in order to possess it. Returning to what Jesus has said, let's look at the description of the kingdom of God once again. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure, a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and then hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field so that he can have that treasure. Once there was a little girl who was quite troubled by this little story. She thought it sounded like that person was cheating. Wouldn't it have been the honest thing to tell the owner of the field about the treasure? If the person hid the treasure and then went and bought the field so that he could get the treasure, wasn't that person actually stealing from the original owner? In other words, she's saying, shouldn't they have worked out a deal? At eight o'clock, I was saying it was kind of like people who love metal detecting. I mean, if I was going to metal detect in my yard, I wouldn't get very far because it's an acre. Most time, people are metal detecting in large fields, fields that they don't own, but fields that they hopefully have gotten permission to metal detect in. And a lot of times, those people will say, yes, you can go out and metal detect, but I want half of what you find, or I want a portion of what you find. Um, if I'm interested in it. So they make out a deal. But 
it just didn't seem right somehow to this girl that this guy just wanted to go and hide the treasure, buy the field, and then take the treasure. The point is, though, but, but in this case, this little girl was missing the point of the story. Because the real point of the story is that the kingdom of God is, a, is of such great value that anything else we may own pales in comparison. That's what Jesus wanted us to realize, that it's, we're not trying to deceive anybody. We're just trying to understand that the kingdom of heaven is is such a great treasure that we are willing to give up everything else in order to possess it. But unlike the treasure hidden in the field, everyone can have this treasure. The kingdom of heaven is available to each and every one of us. God offers this treasure to each one of us every day. The love of Christ from which no one and nothing can separate us is a treasure everyone is invited to have. But there is still another important lesson to be learned from this gospel. This isn't a treasure that is to then be hoarded or hidden away once it is found. Whatever else you may do, do not go and bury this treasure once you have found it. The kingdom of heaven is not meant to be hidden. The kingdom of heaven is meant to be shared, to be shouted from the housetops. This is our task each and every day, to share the kingdom of heaven. For those of you who were here at the 1030 service at the end of the fine arts camp, you may remember that the final song was a song that encouraged us to go out and do just that. As the children left the church, they were singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. One of the verses in that song, um, one of the verses in that song got quite loud at the end, if you remember. All the kids were back there in the back and Peg was strongly encouraging them and it was the verse that said, hide it under a bushel. No! I'm going to let it shine. And of course you had, what, 24 kids shouting out that no. Um, hide it under a bushel, no. That's how important the kingdom of heaven is, that we don't hide it under a bushel, we don't rebury it, we enjoy it, we share it, and we go out and let it shine. You have the greatest treasure on earth, the kingdom of heaven. So go and let it shine. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. 
Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us pray for the Church throughout the world. Strengthen Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our diocesan bishop, and Gail, our assistant bishop, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay leaders. Lord, hear us. Lord, Let, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the world. Bless and guide our president, the members of Congress, and the justices on the Supreme Court. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. We pray for those throughout the world that are suffering from drought and extreme heat, those experiencing famine, and for those affected by war, especially the people of Ukraine, and those affected in the many other conflicts throughout the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We give thanks with those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, Chip Buxton, Evie Wilton, Jack Fackler, Betsy Evans, Jean Hill, Henry Moncure, Jack Tarrant, and Ann Wilcox. And with those celebrating their anniversaries, Bill and Sue Newman. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray for the sick. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And we remember those on our prayer list and those that you may wish to remember, either silently or aloud. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord, hear, us. hear us. Let us pray for the departed and those who mourn. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ according to your promises, especially Thomas Bailey Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Rejoicing the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Mercifully, Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. those who are here, if you have time, please join us in the parish hall for some light refreshments after this service. Um, 
Also, this coming week, there is the Wednesday Eucharist in the chapel at 9.30. Um, and let's see, I um, want to thank those who were able to come and support the ice cream social that happened this past Friday night. Um, unfortunately, it was 95 degrees, but thankfully there was a breeze. So um, we thank everybody who came, those who supported it, those who worked at it um, for the cakes, for the donations, for the uh, raffles, for um, the music, um, and, and all those things. And of course, it also had a bit of um, excitement too. And fortunately, we kind of riled up a nest of, of yellow jackets that weren't too happy for us having an ice cream social. And, so a um, number of people did get stung, and um, we're, we're so glad that Jeff is back with us in the, in the, in the booth, because what, you got 13 stings? No? Nine? Okay. Either way, he had to go to the hospital by ambulance. <laughs> so we're so glad he's back with us and doing well. So thank you. Um, and the, if, if you were here, there was a small child that was stung a couple of times, and we checked on him. He's doing very well. Um, are there any other announcements? Um, I see that the supplies for school supplies are coming in from different ones and filling up the boxes over there in the parish hall for getting ready for the beginning of the school year to help out kids in the county. Um, anything else? Um, the Eucharist today was all blessed at the 830 service and so we will kind of continue that on with continuing receiving communion as they did from those blessed elements so let us walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be present. Be present, O Jesus, our great high priest, as you were present with your disciples. And be known to us in the breaking of bread, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.